Hello everybody, it's Sarah and today we're going to talk about the books that I read in the second half of January. In the first half of January I read these books right here, which are Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, Knife of Dreams by Robert Jordan, Daughter of the Forest by Julie Murley, The Card Secret by Jules Daingada, Elantris by Brandon Sanderson and Warrior by Jennifer Fallon. I talked about these books in my mid-month wrap-up, so I will leave that link down below and up there as well. If you're interested in my thoughts on them, you can go and check that one out. But now we're coming to the stack that is the books that I read in the second half of January. I read a total of 20 books in January. I don't know how that happened. I read almost 10,000 pages. I don't know how that happened either. And I want to try and pick up this deck, but honestly, it's way too big. So let's just get into it because I'm gonna have to try and pick up this deck for the thumbnail later on anyway, and that's gonna be a whole mess. So yeah, let's get into it. Although there are gonna be two books that I won't talk about in this wrap up because they're part of a secret TBR. So I'm not gonna mention them and talk about them just yet. And the first book I wanna talk about is Brasinger by Christopher Paolini, which is the third book in the Inheritance Cycle. This series, for those of you who do not know what this is about, although I'm pretty sure most of you will know, is a kind of early YA high fantasy series before YA high fantasy really became what it is today. And in this series we follow a teenager named Aragon who one day in the woods finds a mysterious blue stone. That stone turns out to be a dragon egg that hatches and he becomes one of the last of the dragon riders and thus is tasked with, you know, defeating the evil tyrant king. And it's a pretty classic high fantasy story. But now on my thoughts on this series. I gotta be honest, <laughs> the only character I even give an ounce of a fuck about is Nasuara because I kind of do really like her. But aside from her, I don't care about the characters, I don't care what happens. Aragon is annoying, his brother Roran is annoying as well. Aya is like the most basic, blandest, manic pixie dream girl elf you can imagine and I just do not care anymore. However, I kind of feel like I owe it to little 12 year old me to finish this series because after all it was the first high fantasy series I ever picked up. And I do still genuinely think that Aragon, the first book, especially if you're someone who's not familiar with a lot of high fantasy, is a good read. But just the series as a whole is just... I don't care. But I'm happy I finally read this because it's been off my shelf since its publication date, so over 10 years. Next I have Sandman Volume 1. This was sent to me by a subscriber, which this and Master of Poisons were sent to me by the same subscriber and I'm just like so in awe and thankful and like, what the fuck, I feel like I'm a proper booktuber now because people send me stuff, which by the way, you don't have to send me stuff. Uh, I still feel kind of weird of having my wish list and everything. Anyway, that's not the point. Uh, this is a graphic novel series by Neil Gaiman and who is the illustrators? Sam Keith, Mike Dringenberg and Malcolm Jones III. Those are the illustrators of this series and it follows Morpheus, the Lord of Dreams, as he is kidnapped. And I gotta be honest, I'm very interested in this. I'm very interested in the story. It's just the first volume and I feel like with graphic novels you can't really tell that much from just the first volume yet. I mean, it's a bind of, of multiple issues from the comic series. And I'm not the biggest fan of the art style because it's a very typical 90s comic art style and I prefer more modern stuff but I still want to continue on with the series because I did really enjoy the story and also the TV show or is it a movie? I think it's a TV show is coming and like they announced Gwendolyn Christie, is that her name? Like Brienne of Tarth, the actress as Lucifer and taking part in the TV show and yeah, so I do want to continue on with this one. I kind of just noticed this because I have it all as a stack right here. I threw my whole starting with my rereads 
rule for my wrap-ups out of the window for this one apparently but the next book or rather short stories I want to talk about is a reread and that is that I reread four short stories from the Arcanum Unfounded. I reread the two short stories that are in the same world as Elantris which are The Empress Soul and The Hope of Elantris and then I also already reread Shadows for Silence in the Forests of Hell and The Sixth of the Dusk and my rereads were for the Crab Along Cosmere read along. And I actually have to say, I think I did enjoy all of the short stories more than the first time I read them. Next is probably the worst book I read so far this month, and that is The Betrayals by Bridget Collins. This was supposed to be The Midnight Bargain by C.L. Polk, I think the author is, because that was what I pulled from my random TBR jar, where I have all of my Goodreads TBR in that TBR jar. But that book isn't out yet, and for some reason I thought this book was the midnight bargain. I don't know what happened, okay? It's just weird fuck up. And I can't even properly explain what this story is about. It's kind of a historical fiction-ish dark academia, except it's not really historical fiction because you don't know what the time period is. And it's set at the school or academy where there's this weird game that they're playing, but it's never explained what this game actually is. And so you're following two characters. One is a guy who comes to this academy and he kind of feels a weird connection to the head mistress, to the director of the academy, who like is the second perspective that we get, but then we also get a perspective of the guy from the past. And it's just really weird, and most of those chapters are really bland and stupid, but the thing that actually made me hate this book and just I found so weird and stupid was this weird Christian persecution? Is it persecution and not prosecution, right? It's persecution. Like this weird Christian persecution subplot, which I have nothing against Christians. I have nothing against any religion, unless they start pushing their religion onto me, which like, go and fuck yourself. But, you know, there was this kind of Christian persecution subplot that was very reminiscent and I think was supposed to be very reminiscent of, you know, the Jewish persecution during Nazi Germany. And that, first of all, was like really uncomfortable, done in a really uncomfortable way. It's never explained why they're persecuted. They just like, I don't know, are rounded up and sent somewhere and they have to have like papers and stuff and it's this weird purity stuff. I don't know. It's never explained what it is about. But like, if you want to have a persecution subplot in your story, it's like Christians. Really, Christians. I mean, I know there's countries today that have Christians persecuted, but like, it's not the thing that happened in the Western world. I mean, it did happen, but it was never Christians. It was like Catholics in England and like Protestants in Germany and, well, not Germany as we know it, but you know, the Holy Roman Empire. Um, or the Huguenots, is that what you call it in English, in France. You know, it's like with subgroups of Christians, but never Christians as a whole. And it really, really uncomfortably reminded me of this, you know, thing that a lot of, especially American evangelical Christians have with the war on Christianity or whatever. And yeah, I'm probably gonna lose some subscribers right now because you're probably all gonna think I hate Christians, which by the way, as I said, I couldn't care less. I literally couldn't care less, but yeah. I really want to unhaul this book, but it's kind of pretty, so I guess I'll keep it on my bookshelf if I ever want a book I need to rant about, because this book was bad. Then a book that's actually also part of my secret TBR and that I'm not gonna talk about long because of that, and also because I already have a review of this book up, is The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang, which was the body read for my book club of Queens, which is in Valkyries, where we read one adult high fantasy book written by a woman per month, and January, obviously, was The Sword of Kaigen, as I said. This is an East Asian-inspired military fantasy, and we follow a mother and her son as their village is attacked, and we follow them through the attack, and so on. 
and I absolutely loved it. I bawled my eyes out. I was sobbing until I was like, I had a sore throat and yeah. But if you wanna know my exact thoughts on this, go and watch my review, which I will leave linked down below and up there as well. Then I read Iona by Alison Goodman, which is the second book in the Eon Iona duology. And this was the book I pulled from my series TBR chart for January. And honestly, I read two books <laughs> this month that are adult high fantasy, East Asian inspired adult high fantasy, written by authors with an East Asian heritage. And this is a book that is YA high fantasy, not adult, and it's East Asian inspired, but it's written by a white author. And you know, the story is still fine, it's still okay, I think it can still be engaging. I didn't particularly care about it, but that's also because I forgot a lot from what happened in the first book. And I was just like, eh, I don't care enough to look up a synopsis. But yeah, the East Asian stuff is just, I mean, the author says it's just inspired and it then turned into its own thing. But it was kind of just like, you know, just didn't feel lived in the world, kind of. I don't know how else to describe it. So yeah, if you ever need a reason to stick with own voices books, although I hesitate always using the term when it comes to high fantasy, because what really is own voices. But you know what I mean. If you ever need a reason to stick to own voices books, then read a book that's inspired by a culture from a white author and from someone with heritage from that culture. And you know, you'll find reasons aside from cultural appropriation to stick with the latter. But anyway, I didn't tell you what the series is about yet, right? This series basically is set in this world where every few years you have new dragon eyes that are like chosen by these dragon creatures. And usually they're only men. Now you have our main character Iona who dresses up as a boy to go to this choosing ceremony and is chosen as the new dragon eye for one of the dragons. And so yeah, she becomes the new dragon eye and there's a lot of stuff going on on the side, intrigues, politics, and so on. And yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it fine enough, but honestly, there's so many much better books out there that I just wouldn't bother. Then I read two Jennifer Fallon books. I finished the Wolfblade Hydron Chronicles trilogy, which is the prequel trilogy to the Demon Child duology, not duology, trilogy. And I read the first book in this trilogy. So last book in this one, first book in this one. I will have reviews up of both of these trilogies. Of this one, obviously, only once I'm done with the trilogy, I will have a series review. And of this one, I will probably have my review up even later because, yeah, I decided since this is a prequel trilogy that was written later, I just want to finish reading this trilogy again first so that I can then properly talk about is it necessary to read this one before you read this one and so on. So yeah, but both of these trilogies are set obviously in the same world. In this series we follow mostly one character, Marla Wolfblade, who is the brother of the High Prince of Hydria. And as such she doesn't have a lot of power because she's a woman and she's mostly just a pawn in the game of politics because her child will probably be the heir of Hydra because her brother probably won't get an heir himself. However, she decides to, you know, get more savvy in politics and take some power for herself and also make sure that her family always stays safe from the intrigues at court. And this series is a lot less politic focused. In this one, we follow Rashil, who is the demon child. And what the demon child basically is, is she's a child who was born with the purpose to kill a god. And so we follow her and follow her as she kind of follows her destiny. So yeah, I can recommend both series since they're both old favorites of mine. And I haven't reread the Demon Child trilogy in a long time, so that's kind of a weird experience. Then I binged the last three books in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series, which are The Titan's Curse, The Battle of the Labyrinth, and The Last 
Olympian. The Percy Jackson and the Olympian series is a middle grade series following Percy Jackson who one day finds out that he's a demigod. So he finds out that his father is Poseidon, the Greek god of the sea. Which, you know, actually you only find out at the halfway point, not the halfway point, but actually quite late in the first book. So like the first third or something. But at the same time, it says it on the back of the book. So like... <laughs> It's kind of dealt with within the book as this big revelation that he's the son of Poseidon, but like, if you want to make it a revelation, don't write it on the back of the book. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed finishing my reread of this, obviously since I binged three books in a month. And honestly, I would still say The Last Olympian is my favorite book in the series. So yeah, I still really, really enjoyed my reread of the series. And while I don't think it's a middle grade series that is 100% enjoyable for adults as it is for, like, you know, teenagers and younger, I still think that if you're a person who thinks they would have enjoyed this as a child, I think it's just a nice and fun read. And then the last book I finished in January was The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Ogawa, which was translated from Japanese. And this was sent to me as a Christmas present from Clio by Bemused Bookworm, which thank you so much again. I will leave her channel link down below. And this is basically a story following a housekeeper to a mathematician to a professor who only has 80 minutes of short-term memory and so after 80 minutes he forgets everything and so you follow the two of them as they kind of build a relationship and become friends and it's just a really sweet story and you have a lot of stuff a lot of talk about the beauty not really of mathematics as a whole but of numbers and I I love mathematics, I know that's weird or whatever, but I do really enjoy mathematics. I don't enjoy doing mathematics, but I enjoy listening to people who love mathematics. And so I just really love this book. Even though I would say I don't think I enjoyed it as much as The Memory Police, which of course was on my favorite books of 2020 list, I still can highly recommend this one. And so yeah, that was it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and also maybe subscribing. If you read any of the books that I talked about just now, tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. All the links to my social media are in the description box down below, so go and check those out. As I said, all the links to my book club are also in the description box down below, so go and check those out as well. And I hope I'll see you soon. Bye!